Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Guy, author of The Dissertation Warrior, and I'm so happy to be with you here on this beautiful summer afternoon to talk to you about one of the most conf one of the most controversial and more recent topics that we could discuss here on my channel about ChatGPT and its use in the dissertation. Ethical lines, is it a tool of evil? What can you do and what can't you do? And today, I'd like to talk to you about the usefulness of this tool. For those of you that are unaware, ChatGPT came on the scene in November of 2022. It is one of the largest trained data sets ever in existence. And it, I believe, boasted of over 100 million users within simply two months of its creation. And I, I, I could be wrong, but I think that was one of the largest, most fastest app adoptions ever in the history of this, this world. And this technology is exceedingly useful for the dissertation writer and the researcher. And that's why I want to talk to you about this today. ChatGPT is a large language model. And what that means is that it was fed a massive billions upon billions of data points based upon internet data, I believe 2021 and prior, if I'm not mistaken. And what essentially it does is it tracks the essential statistical probability of one word following another. And in a way, it allows for a conversational back and forth between a user and between its data set that is unlike anything else out there in the world. Because if you think about it, there are databases that are out there online where you can get access to research-based data, but you can't talk to those databases. What you can do is you can log in to your favorite database. You can go and you can type in certain search terms and it will provide back what it assumes you're looking for based upon the keywords that's assigned to specific articles and so on. But with a large language model like ChatGPT, what it's gonna do is it's gonna provide you data as it understands that you need based upon all the sources it gathered within its large data set. So this makes it really useful for someone like you. So today, what we want to talk about, what I want to talk about, is I want to talk about how you can utilize this in your dissertation and in your research. I then want to talk about the ethical lines and where they cross and sort of like a compass point for you of knowing, are you going too far? Are you going to get expelled from your program? And then I'd like to talk about really the ultimate use of ChatGPT as you are working on your dissertation. So to do this, I want to share my screen with you and let's jump straight in to ChatGPT and let's talk about what you can do with this amazing tool. So with ChatGPT, it is a conversational model. You go to chat.openai.com and you are going to be presented with, after you've signed up, with a screen where you can input a query of some kind. And you know what the interesting thing is? Uh, this chat box is very conversational and it, it is going to adapt its conversation to your needs as long as you're telling the AI what you need. This, by the way, is a topic that we're going to be discussing uh, in mass in my dissertation summer camp. Uh, my dissertation summer camp is happening this month in June of 2023. It is my ultimate offering for dissertation writers, people who are in the doctoral world who want to make major major progress in their dissertation during this summer. For those of you that want to look back on August, July, and June of 2023 and say, wow, this is something, this was a period of time where I made some massive progress. I want to teach you how to do that. And so I just put in the comments, I've just put a link for you. And later on, this of course will be in the description for you to see. So ChatGPT is so powerful. We can ask it questions like this. Like for example, I'm going to go, by the way, I'm going to go to the comments in just a second. So for those of you that are watching this live, put in your dissertation topic into the comments regardless of how brief, and I'm going to show you how powerful this is. So already I have a volunteer uh, that came forth ahead of time and said that uh, I could talk about her topic. So I want to talk about that here. So let's imagine that you are studying the resilience of nurses in the United States. What I could do is I could go and I could ask ChatGPT, I could say, what is the, what are the time periods of the history of nursing in the United States that I might want to discuss in a scholarly paper. 
Okay. And so what it's going to immediately do is it's going to provide the essential history based upon its understanding of my query. Now, notice that what it's doing is it is saying, well, all the way back, you know, into the Civil War and the colonial era. And that might be useful to me if I'm looking to do an expansive history of this type. But what I might do then is I can use the capability of going back and forth with ChatGPT in a conversation as a way of narrowing this information further. I could ask it then, I could say, uh, given the above, uh, what time periods might I divide or what time periods uh, of focus should I consider for mm, 1980 forward to present? And what it's then going to do, it's going to readjust its output based upon what I've asked it. So, and, and it's really calculating here. I don't think I've seen it pause like this. Makes me wonder if I've lost my internet connection. That's interesting. Let's see. Is it calculating? What's it doing? I've never seen this before. Of course, right when I'm live streaming, it does this. My goodness. Let's do this another try. Let me see if I can do a new chat. And I could say, what are the time periods of, of history for nursing that might that I might discuss in a scholarly paper focusing on 1980 forward. And there we go. Okay, so now I might talk about contemporary nursing practice through the 1980s, nursing in the digital age and so on, nursing leadership and advocacy and so on, and global health. Now, this is very useful because now I have an essential roadmap of the history of nursing during that time period. What I could also do is I could do the same for resilience. I could say, uh, similarly, what is what are the time periods of resilience theory from 1980 forward? And what I could then get is I could get the various resilience-related theories that are presented in the literature from 1980 and forward. Now, this brings up an interesting question is what is this useful for? Is this something that I'm gonna go and I'm gonna copy and paste into one's dissertation? No, of course not, uh, because I'm an ethical compass. Uh, and also this type of writing uh, in and of itself is not useful in a dissertation. What it's providing for me here is an overall gist of what happened during these time periods, but there's no scholarly backing for any of the statements. There is, uh, this is probably the structure that it's providing back is not entirely useful, but what it is useful for in terms of writing, but what it is useful for is the, for the research. I mean, I want you to imagine for a second, think about if you had a friend that you could go to and they knew everything about, for the most part, everything about theory, the theory that you're examining or one of the areas of your literature review that you're examining. And what they could do is you could say, I, I'm looking for all the major time periods that I should cover in my paper. Could you tell me those? And they would tell you those. What would you do with that information? Would you just type that into your dissertation? No. What you would do is you'd use that as a way by which then to go and do more further research for you to have a have a more thorough understanding of what the literature is saying. You'd go find articles based upon those time periods, most likely. So this is where we get down to the ethics of ChatGPT and the utilization of ChatGPT in doctoral work. Uh, there is a rule, I think, in life that's been very useful for me, is where there's a secret, there's often a problem. And so if you find yourself utilizing any tool in a way that you don't feel comfortable telling your dissertation chair, your, your principal advisor that you're utilizing such a tool, then there's, there could be something there, something worth thinking about. Now, I had a unique experience about six weeks ago, as many of you know, uh, in addition to running this dissertation summer camp this month, uh, I run the dissertation their literature review but they were utilizing another AI to rewrite what ChatGPT was writing because they didn't 
they wanted to make sure that they didn't get caught doing this. Well, naturally, this person and I uh, are not working together. I, I couldn't do that. Uh, but it really provided an interesting sort of case study moment that I'd like to share with you is, you know, I always start with my heart and with my sense of ethic. Can I sleep tonight knowing <laughs> knowing that uh, that perhaps uh, the, that what I did would be considered plagiarism? Uh, no, I couldn't sleep tonight uh, if that was the case. Uh, but let's get beyond that for a second. Let's let's say that I was somehow able to get beyond the heart of this topic, which is the heart of the topic of I I have a job to do as a doctoral student, and I want to make sure that the work that I do is not only the best that I could do, but it's something that is that I can live with for the rest of my life and say that not only did I give this project as much as I could, but I honored all the scholars along the way that did all this hard work. I want to be able to live with that. I also wouldn't want to live in fear. And I tell you that if you think about this technology, the way it's become so ubiquitous, right? There's one a very popular science fiction journal that I subscribe to, and they had to shut down submissions for a time period because their submission rate grew so much, so much because of people utilizing uh, artificial intelligence to write uh, science fiction stories. And so I have to believe that what's going to be happening in the coming years is that I imagine that they're going to have to provide an authenticity score that research databases are going to not be able to definitively necessarily say whether or not someone used AI, but they'll be able to provide probably a probability score, you know, out of 10 or something. Like there's a 9.9 .9 out of 10 that this was written by some AI versus a one or a 0.5 and so on. Uh, for those of you that have had exposure to plagiarism checkers, uh, you know that it doesn't necessarily say yes, plagiarism or no plagiarism. In fact, a lot of these plagiarism checkers, what they do is they provide a score based upon an algorithm. And uh, the instructor's job is then to go look at the report and discover whether or not actual plagiarism did occur. And I have a feeling that even if, even if someone was able to, to cheat the system, to have one AI, one AI write it, another AI to rewrite it, and three other AIs to rewrite that stuff. Even then, if you were able to somehow get through your proposal defense, which I can't imagine you do, and even if you were to get through data collection and all that, and you were able to get through your final defense and actually convince your committee that you knew what you were talking about, let's assume that all that worked. What's stopping the technology three years down the line, three months down the line, or three days from now, being able to detect that what one did back in time, whenever you wrote your dissertation, was not, in fact, written by you. It was written by an AI. Imagine that. So there is an ethical piece of me, but I'd like to also hand to you the idea that, that regret uh, in this regard could chase you in your life. And so be real careful there. And so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to talk about where this is infinitely even more useful as a tool. So let's share back our screen and let's go back to our topic. So we were talking about nursing and resilience. And I want you to imagine that, uh, imagine that your favorite database, think about your favorite database that you use to find research articles. Imagine that you and the database could have a conversation. That's where this is really useful. So here I have, I'm looking at resilience and uh, there's this period it pointed out about trauma and resilience uh, in the 2000s. And so I could say, uh, you point out a period of time uh, in the 2000s uh, recalled trauma and resilience. What are the most important scholarly articles about this topic during that time period that I should read? And what it's going to do is it's going to crunch and it's going to start providing me the actual articles that I should go and I should read. <laughs> so 
what I can then do is I can take these articles, team, and I can put these into my favorite database search, and I can go locate these articles. I can then read them and do the real work that a literature reviewer, that a doctoral student wouldn't do, is to go read this work and determine truly what's happening here in these articles. I could even then look at the work cited page of each of these articles and see what authors they're citing, which will lead me to more articles and more articles and so on. And then I can go back, I can say resilience in the digital age. And I could then say, please provide me the most important scholarly articles written in the period of, quote, resilience in the digital age. And then again, providing those back. So does this definitively mean that these are the most important articles? No, no. The model is making a prediction based upon the data set that it was provided, but it provides a starting point for you as a researcher to then go and do the hard work that's intended of you. Do you see the potential of the power there? So chat GPT, a tool of evil, uh, as with any tool, any tool can be used for good. Any tool could be used indeed for evil. And so uh, walk uh, in the spirit of light and do good. And so uh, in the chat box, of course, I have the link for the chat box. Uh, indeed, I mean the comments box. I have a link for you uh, where you can go and you can find out about our dissertation summer camp. Uh, this is going to be a major opportunity for many of you to turn the corner in your dissertation, to break free of